from two turning on the lights, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts in the book of Romans. I am looking for the gospel according to Matthew. We're going to read a little bit here this morning. I'm going to tell a little, it's going to be a little story time with Brian today. Well, thank you for bearing with me. Tuesday morning, feeling fantastic, uh, ready to rock the world. By Tuesday evening, I was out of it. Uh, and nothing more than seasonal allergies, right? They just rock in my head, preventing sleep. And then you take medicine. And as much as they do for medicine, for allergies, you know what happens. Like, I walked around all day yesterday. Yesterday morning, I couldn't talk. I didn't sleep very well. Trying to find some help for what's going on. So we did all of those things yesterday. I was ready to go all three days this week. So that's my first story. You can still hear it. It's going to be this way. My, the, <clears throat> the church has heard it for weeks now. Now, as I've gotten older, I don't know if this is true for... For other people, but allergies were never really a part of my life. The past decade, they've been creeping up on me. And even in the spring, they weren't like this now, because I didn't know what it was. And when it hit this hard, I thought, oh my goodness, what's going on? Sinus infection, like pneumonia, what's going on? Allergy. Wow, crazy. So I'm working on that right now for you uh, so I can uh, stay up and running. It takes your energy, you know that, and the medicine takes your energy and your attitude, crapola attitude, like ugh, ugh, you just feel like you're walking underwater all the time. So that's my story. But I got a story from Tuesday to share with you. As we get started here today, I'm going to check in and see who all is checking in here with me. Let's check this out. There's Brian D. Warner's profile. Oh, there we are. Some seven people. Dale, Debbie, Mary, good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see that you're here. I'm going to give this a name. Should I call it Story Time with Brian? What do you want to call it? Turning on the lights, exclamation point. Story time with Brian, exclamation point. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm just, some days, and this isn't a, like, you know, I don't need, it's like, some days I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <coughs> I know you guys are like that. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Turning on the Lights. i got a great story for you. A few weeks ago, I preached. Oh, there we go. Hold on. I tapped my board. <coughs> <coughs> I preached about, you know, the, we were talking about prayer and <coughs> the answer to prayer, how God does all those different things. And it, 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 it's wide-ranging from the most confusing and the most frustrating of answers to prayer. <coughs> As in, why did you say no? to the most challenging answers to prayer when you pray for something and this you weave your way through God's will and he is just challenging you to help develop what you have prayed for character right you pray for character you pray for a pure heart you pray for all of those things and then all of a sudden all of this websites and all these different challenges come your way well you prayed for a pure heart exercise it that sort of thing right the very challenging ones to this, the simple little gifts that you're like, Lord, uh, you know I'm having a bad day. I know you know. Please help me find my phone. You know, that sort of thing. And he's like, okay. And he gives you, it's over there in the corner. Look under the sheet. Ah, thank you. So he helps you find your iPhone. And then we started talking about finding your iPhone. You know, the Lord helping you find your iPhone. Sometimes that's really big. We talked about different situations in life where you're praying. Lord, you're praying for this, for this circumstance or for this situation. I'm talking about big situations like um, a, a godly relationship with a man or a woman and those sorts of things. And the Lord answers and puts you in that place and you found it. Okay, well, so we're talking about all of those different things. Uh, and we had been and have been at church town for a long time uh, during our prayer service especially. So Tuesday, 
I go to the UPS store. I ride to the UPS store. What a beautiful day. Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday morning, I spent here and then working. I know, that stories are boring. I'm getting to the story, though. I ride to the UPS store. I've got these glasses in this pocket right here. I'm wearing sunglasses and my helmet and everything else. I get off of the bike to take the package back to the UPS store. It's an Amazon return for my wife. Shout out, Kelly Warner. Love you. Oh, do I love you. So there I go. And, and so I put the sunglasses in this pocket and I take the glasses out. And I go to do the business in the UPS store. I come back out and I take the sunglasses out of this pocket and put them over my glasses. I realize that. What a dork. What an idiot. I can't do that. So I take these glasses off, take these glasses off, and set them on my saddlebag. Put on my sunglasses and take off. You're right. That's right. Look at them. Get home. I realize what I had done. I grab Pastor Susie. We jump back in the car. This is an hour has passed. I go back to the parking lot. These babies had been run over by a car. This lens popped out. It's all messed up down here. There they lay. Shout out to whatever manufacturer makes these glasses. There is a tire print over this lens. It's popped out. It's laying elsewhere. Everything is twisted and mangled. Popped it right back into place. Got the lens in. Got my glasses back. There's, I found, I'm like, Lord, Lord, you know, please. This is before the big allergy attack Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon is when, I mean, it hit like I ran into an allergy wall, like flat on my back in 20 minutes. Craziness. Um, but that was it, you know? And, and I just, you just say thank you. You don't, you know, you're, you realize you're not special or whatever. You're just, Lord, it's been a day, like, I just want to find my glasses if they're there and I, I said please if I can just find the frames because I like the frames you know so because I've got a, an eye appointment coming up in another five weeks or so and more than the frames he got me back in my glasses father God we pray that as we go in the word today that you would guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit Lord we're grateful to be gathered today in your name we love you we appreciate you we thank you for what you have done we thank you for what you do every single day, Lord. We thank you for the promises upon which we trust. In Jesus' name, amen. That always feels good. Sage Morrison is watching you. Hi, Sage. Hi, Renee. Hi, Kim. Say good morning, everybody. Check in. You can share the video. We're about to get into it. Go ahead and share it if you want to. Because we're talking about... I talked on Tuesday about battle lines. I used a lot of military analogies here. I talked about as the church presents itself. Now I'm talking about the church that purports to be preaching the word of God without dilution. And, and, and so there, there are two large portions of the Christian church. There is the false church and there is the Christian church, the Christ-following, Bible-following church. Within the Bible-following church, I said that in, in terms of spiritual warfare, there are two basic camps. Right? Well, there are three. We, we, want the, we want the one where we talk about, but we talk about churches that go inside a bunker. They go inside a bunker, and they put up big walls, and they ignore the world. And if you want to be a part of that little group, which is kind of cultish, like a Jesus cultish, you're not interested in even looking outside of the bunk bunker. You're in the bunker for your safety. You're defending yourself until the, you're taken up or he comes down. The second large thing that we'll see is, is, is Christians who are on fire or whatever you might want to say it. But they, 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 I said it to, to a friend on Tuesday. Were great conversations. Shout out, Amber. And I said, you know, you, if you sit in the bunker and you lob concrete Bibles at your enemies, that is what we're known for as well. We'll be in the bunker. We'll be in our position. And then we'll just try to beat the enemies of God over the head with concrete Bibles. Um, and that is not necessarily effective 
either. Although that is a, it can be an effective tactic to use when necessary, if that's it. If all you have is a hammer, then every situation you see in the world becomes a nail. Does that make sense? And I argued that we're called to be on the battlefield. We have the strategy. We know the strategy. We see the picture of the salvific history of humankind. We see the prophecy for the end times. We have the strategy. Sound like SpongeBob. Strategy. We have the tactics. I'm talking about what's the difference. Strategy is the overall. This is our overall objective. This is what we want to accomplish. Tactics are the objectives that lead you to that overall goal. What do you do? How do you, how do you operate on the spiritual battlefield? Well, we talked about prayer. That is the great weapon, right? Prayer. We, and you can go to Ephesians 6 and look at the armor of God, and that's exactly why it is written there. You see defensive armor, and you see offensive weapons. Why? Because you're meant to be on the battlefield in the fight. So that's kind of where we stop. What does that look like? Does it look like slamming everybody everywhere and, and making enemies wherever you go? No, listen to me, Christians. You don't have to make enemies wherever you go. Because anybody that is not in the family of God is an enemy of God. Scripture tells us that. While we were still sinners, while we were enemies of the Most High, His grace made redemption available. Now, does that mean that they're, everyone's out there burning churches and, and wanting to crucify Christians? No, absolutely not. We're talking spiritual warfare. So you don't have to go out making enemies. The enemies are there. You don't have to go out making war. The war is established for you. I'm using these terms so that we can categorize it and understand it. So the Lord in his will is going to take you in your armor and you are going to walk on that battlefield and do as he wishes you to do. And that could be as little as talking to your neighbor. We are walking down with your dog. Might be a familiar situation. You're walking through town with your dog and your neighbor is just sitting there, hands in his head, upset. Hey, what's going on? You know that I have a higher hope after hearing their story. I have a higher hope. I understand your circumstances, but I can share with you the power of God that makes puts those circumstances in their proper perspective. Renee Mounts, if you're still watching, you talked about that on Sunday. Your daughter made your surgery. But you had a you had it was in its proper perspective within God's creation and God's sovereignty. It did not consume you, overwhelm you, it did not make you anxious. That's the power of God. It can be as simple as saying, Hey, what's going on? It can be as dramatic as happens in the world every week as professing faith in Jesus Christ under threat of death and everything in between. The Lord says, do not worry about what to say, for when the time comes, they will be the words of my Father that flow through you. You see what's happening here? Much like when we talk about um, church and building church and running out ahead of God's Holy Spirit and saying, look at me, look at me, we can build church, we can build church. Look at this Taj Mahal, look at all of these programs. Now come on, Jesus, look what we did for you Come on, Jesus, come and bless it. Make it happen. When we're talking about sharing the gospel, engaging in spiritual warfare, we can do that as well. We can grab our Bibles. We can weaponize it if we so choose. And we can run ahead of God doing all sorts of things that dishonor God. Why does it dishonor? You say, well, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm, I'm telling those homosexuals how awful they are. How does that dishonor God?
that anything outside of the will of God dishonors God. He is honored when we exercise it within his will. So we're talking about tactics of spiritual warfare. Rule number one is do not forget that it is not you who carries the fight. It is the spirit of God within you. It is the transformed you. It is the new Rene, the new angel, the new Larry. Filled with God's Holy Spirit, moving forward on the battlefield, the power of God. Praying in this relationship with God and carrying the word of God. Does that make sense? That's, I mean, what, it's very simple, actually. It is the transformed you, and that transform, transformation indicates that you carry the power of God within you. You are in touch with that power of God through the power of prayer. Prayer, 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 prayer. And you carry the word of God, the immutable, unchanging, infallible word of God. Never fails in its purposes. Infallible is a very important word that you should learn if you're a Christian and you believe in the word of God. People will always try to get hung up on inerrancy. Well, we know for a fact that words have been changed in translation. Yes, I, I, we don't even know what the original manuscripts were. We've talked about that. Nobody has any original manuscripts. Scripts, but we have lots and lots and lots of early translations. Why would the Lord do it that way? We don't have any original manuscripts. Oh, maybe because human beings are idol worshipers and we would take that scrap of paper, build a shrine around it. Does it sound like some rock in the Middle East? Um, take a, that piece of paper and build a shrine around it and then begin to worship that rock and claim we're worshiping God. That rock, that paper. Scissors, you see what I'm saying? God knows we're idol worshipers and we would do that. My goodness gracious, the church has gone around for 2,000 years looking for relics and the bones of the apostles and all of this other stuff. Now, wars would be fought over the original manuscripts of, of, of Scripture. God knows that. Okay, so we have dozens and dozens and dozens of early translations. And yes, we know. Well, look at this. It's not inerrant. Infallible is the word. When Scripture, it teaches us, Scripture itself comments on Scripture and says when the word of God goes out, it will never fail in its purposes because it is empowered by the living God himself. Infallible. Whether you're working, preaching Leviticus or Matthew or Revelation or Exodus or one of the prophets, it never fails. Did you ever wonder, and you preachers, this is the most amazing thing. So many amazing things happen when, you, when you're gathered as a congregation and you're submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ and his power comes over you and the congregation and you preach the word of God. So many amazing things happen from the utter exhaustion you feel afterwards to this. Four, five, seven different people come up and tell you four, five, seven different things they heard. You said the same thing from the word of God. The living God took that word and penetrated the soft hearts of those who will listen. And I'm like, I didn't actually say that. I don't do that, you know, but I'm in my head, I'm like, I didn't actually say that. But that the Lord... And then I'll turn and the person will be, you spoke exactly, well, I didn't speak, but you know, it was him. And he spoke exactly to your need today. Completely different scenarios. I mean, that is one of the most miraculous, amazing Holy Spirit things that, that occurs every single Sunday. <clears throat> the word of God is infallible. Learn that word. Learn that word, word and do not get into inane arguments about translations and all of those things. You should be wise. You should look at your translations. We can talk about that again if we want to. Understanding good translation, good translation the protocol and all of that stuff and getting yourself a good translation. But don't get hung up on inane arguments about inerrancy. But in the original manuscripts, well, first of all, we don't have original manuscripts, but in the King James, stop it. 
King James is a translation of a translation. The King James, by definition, is a paraphrase. So stop. Stop. Satan seeks to divide whether we're fighting over a translation of the Bible or not. Now, someone comes out with a horrible translation, yeah. Listen to this. So he calls the apostles. I want you to understand this because it is really important. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, everybody. There's my, I just see myself on delay. This is, my, this is SpongeBob Day. I guess SpongeBob, they came out and said SpongeBob is actually gay. Maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Ah, rainbows. Rainbows under the water don't make any sense. Well, a lot of what SpongeBob does doesn't make any sense. I think that's why. Go ahead and share the video. We're about to get into it for the last session here. Just about 10 more minutes. <coughs> you subscribe to the Churchtown channel, YouTube channel. Hey, also want to tell you this. We put together very quickly a movie night this night. God's Not Dead under the pavilion Friday night at 7 o'clock. Just because the weather is going to be what it is, Sunday's supposed to be 80 degrees. So I have the projector. I'll have the sound system. We'll have some popcorn, whatever. Bring something to eat. Bring a lawn chair. You can sit at the tables. Bring a blanket. Start arriving around 6.30. Movie goes off at 7. You'll be done by 9. If you, and, and this is for real. Like youth, come on over youth. And if you have, if you're a parent of a 15, 16 year, 16 year old and they're talking to somebody, what a great time. Say, hey, I know that you've been talking to Rob. Why don't you invite Rob to movie night at Churchtown? Dad and I will sit in the back. You can sit with Rob. Huh? Helping you out, parents. Nice, safe environment. Just letting you know. Jesus sent out the 12 apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel, God's lost sheep. And once again, we see the theme of preaching into the ecclesia first. Preaching into the Ecclesia first. If there is no truth in, in the body of Christ, what we call the body of Christ, right? New Testament. If there's no truth in the congregation, if there's no truth, then all bets are off. The congregation is going to be unhealthy, not knowing the word of God or knowing it wrongly, and everything that they do is going to be unhealthy. So we see that tradition, that, that, that regimen of preaching into the body of First, go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons, give as freely as you have received. There's one hymn. There's one hymn. Don't take any money for your money belts, no gold, silver, copper coins. Don't carry a traveler's bag with change of clothes, sandals, even walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed. A little good lesson in faith right there. Go, do what you're called to do. But, 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 but food, but clothing. Those are not, those are big butts. Like sometimes we have these Christian butts and we're like, but I'm busy, but I have a job, but like those are like cast them aside. These are big butts. I need food, clothing, water. He's like, keep your big butt to yourself. I'll take care of you. You know what I mean? Whenever you enter a city or a village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If not, take it back. Spiritual warfare begins. Evil can masquerade as light. Come on in, pastor. Come on in, pastor. Now let me try to defile your spirit with false teaching. Now let me try to defile your mindset. Let me try to burden you with issues and problems and things. Let me try to, let me try to capture you with inane arguments about translations of the Bible and how wrong you are. No, thank you very much. I live by the power of God and he'll deal with you in his own way. God bless you and move on. What? Yeah. If any household or town refuses to welcome you, listen to your message, shake the dust from his feet as you leave. It's a clear indication of free will. 
clear indication of free will. I refuse, they say. You have to have a choice in order to refuse. I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on Judgment Day. Look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts. You will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. It reminds me, if you saw that John MacArthur interview that I posted, and he said, the threat is to throw me in prison, which would be okay with me because I've never done a prison ministry. That's exactly what he's talking about, real life, what scripture is talking about here. And of course, Paul lived that as well. Converted nearly everybody he came across in prison. you the right words at the right time for it is not you who will be speaking it says I have slow internet I'm sorry stop and restart the stream did it break up Are you guys still with me read in Matthew 10 listen to this brother will betray his brother to death a father will betray his own child children and cause them to be killed are you hearing this Sounds an awful lot like warfare to me. We ignore that. And I'm, I'm, you, you've already heard what I've said. I'm not like, grab your Bibles and your guns and go out. No. But the, the language, the terminology, the concepts are the same because the viciousness of the spiritual war is on par. Brother will betray brother. Father will betray his own child. Children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed in the name of Christ. We can't ignore that. I like sunshine and roses as much as the next person. I like Christian pep talks and go get them and live your best, best life now. And it, sometimes we all need to hear that, that the transformed body is just the power of God and we don't talk about the warfare and we, do, we just talk about the power of God and the love of God and the redemption of God and how glorious and amazing it feels. But that will only get you so far. Your feelings will only get you so far. As a follower of Jesus Christ, there will come a time and at that time is now when you must put one foot in front of the other and live for him. Get yourself out of the defensive bunker. Get yourself out of the artillery bunker. And get on the playing field. Get on the battlefield. And do what he asks you to do. And do not fear. For when you are questioned, when you are captured, when you are cornered, the Father himself will give you the very words to say. Whether it is your neighbor who is weeping on their porch, whether it is that person at the supermarket that looks so frazzled and trying to keep four kids clinging to the cart while he or she tries to fill it with growth, whatever the case may be, whether you are captured by the princes and principalities of this world and told to never profess faith in Jesus Christ again, anything in between, you have no fear because the very power of God that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And we can talk about disease, we can talk about viruses, we can talk about governmental overreach into the constitutional rights of the individual and of the church. We can talk about all of those things because as citizens of the United States and citizens of the kingdom of God, we are called to use the brains that God gave us and exercise wisdom through Christ, the wisdom of Christ and the common sense that we can use to serve one another, protect one another, and care for one another without big brother or big government or big king telling us how, what, why, 
We can do that for one another. If we read of the Ecclesia, if we understand the unity of the body of Christ, and we understand that that is indeed our purpose to care for one another. But you got to hear this, man. I'm going to read this again. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. Children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. All nations will hate you because you are my followers. Like I told you, you don't need to go out starting wars. The war is upon us. The war came upon us. When Adam and Eve believed the first lie about the word of God. And make no mistake about it. That original sin was created because Adam and Eve believed the first lie that Satan told about the word of God. Literally the first words out of his mouth were, did he really say that? Talk about going, I mean, right into the body of Christ. The body of Christ was two people at that time. And Satan spoke right into it, twisted the word of God, and divided the body and divided the body from God. It's all the same story. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one town, flee to the next. I tell you the truth, the Son of Man will return before you have reached all the towns of Israel. Listen to me. I'm going to read that one more time. Because at the end of that is the huge, huge encouragement and point. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. All nations will hate you because you are my followers. Listen to me, church. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. Do you get it? Do you get it? If you endure to the end, how do you endure? You endure only by the power of God. <clears throat> Don't fear those who can kill the body. Fear only he who created you, your body and soul. That's what I've got to say today. Church, what are you doing? Come on. Come on now. It, the scripture whether it's in Matthew 10, Matthew 14, Revelation 6, Revelation 10, you talk about the two bodies of witnesses. That's the only war that we fight. We, we bear witness to the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. We bear witness. And the enemy bears witness to the falsehood of that word and lifts human beings themselves and their values up as idols to be worshipped. Does it make sense? There's only, there's only, that's the battle. I know we look around politically, socially, economically, all these things and we should be prudent and wise and do our part. We should pray, we should be informed, we should vote, all of those things. I'm not saying that. But the battle that we fight is spiritual. Because that person that I talked about who's weeping on their porch 100 feet away from you right now, you don't know if they're a Democrat or a Republican or never registered to vote. You don't know if they're a Christian or a Muslim or an atheist. You know that they're hurting. And you bring light into their dark world by the Spirit of God. So ultimately, that is the battle that we fight. And walking on the battlefield, you will encounter that person and you will encounter also the staunchest resistance and persecution that you can imagine. Ultimately, that is the battle we fight. The, the, the scripture says, do you do not return evil with evil. You return, e return evil with good. And what is good? The will of God is good. It's good and perfect will. You don't return evil with evil. You return evil with good. 
and what is good. The will of God is good. His perfect good will. I hope that helps. Read the rest of chapter 10. It, it's really awesome stuff, but don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. There's a promise. Good and evil, the scabs will be written, ripped off evil and it will be seen for what it is and understood for what it is. We have to trust that. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. My brothers and sisters, here's our prayer. Father God, we just pray that your church is being made whole and healthy by the power of your Holy Spirit each and every day, that she exists for you, that the word of God, the unadulterated word of God is what each and every congregation clings to. It is what each and every preacher, leader of the congregation clings to, preaches, teaches, exposits so that your church knows and understands your word and your will, Lord. So that Satan and his lies against your word do not penetrate the ecclesia, the bride, the body of Christ itself. Lord, keep your bride holy and pure until the day of your return and Lord, lead us in your will. Get us, help us, motivate us, draw us, will us out of those bunkers and onto the battlefield wearing the full armor of God. And waging spiritual warfare to expand the very kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom that you died, the kingdom that begins in our hearts. Lord, in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ of God, we pray. Amen. It's a good word, brothers and sisters. Not from me. It's a good word. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Choose this day whom you will serve. For me, in my house, and for the church town, church of God, we will serve the Lord. And we know how to do that. So, no matter what is happening, I pray that you find your ecclesia this weekend. I pray that you invest the power of prayer and with the strength of God's word. Go to church, my brothers and sisters. It really is important.